Okay, it works like this. You have the periphery here with the skin and stuff on it, and here you have the spinal cord. Now, whereas you think of what would happen is that you would have a sensory receptor there and it would transmit the pain signal into the spinal cord, like that, and then cross over and go up to the brain. What, actually, what you actually have is a number of branches that come off from the sensory nerve like that. So now when action potentials kind of come in, instead of just going straight the way, they do that, yes, but they also come down all the branches as well. And so one action potential started here with some sort of injury right in the outside here ends up by being transmitted to all these different branches of this same nerve in that way into all these different branches out here. Now what do they do when they get to each one of these? They tend to cause, uh, they tend to release substance P, substance P, and then they cause typically mast cell degranulation or histamine release from mast cells. And what that can do is not only cause additional pain, but it can cause um, local blood vessels to release water and stuff and that gives you an edema and a so-called wheel or, or, or a bump around the injury. But then also this histamine that's released will activate other primary nerve fibres. God, this is a terrible picture. Um, which will propagate it further still. So that will actually cause further action potentials to be activated. That will uh, transmit into the centre. But they also will then end up spreading um, to their uh, the wrong way down their nerve fibres and spreading it out progressively. Now, I don't know what stops it, why it only goes so far as opposed to then erupting throughout the whole body, but that's the basic principle of the Lewis triple response. That is an awful picture, isn't it?